like this. What holy and godly lives you should live. I got to read that 11th verse again. Are you following along? Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and god and <laughs> what holy and godly lives you should live, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day, He will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, the Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of Scripture. And this will result in their destruction. Peter's final words, verse 17, I am warning you ahead of time, dear friends, be on guard so that you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. We've done a little studying in the letters of Peter. And as Peter started out in his first letter, he was attempting to talk to people about suffering that came from the outside. Now the scripture tells us here in 2 Peter that he is giving a warning. And that's the warning that needs to be spread throughout our world today because people need to be warned Jesus is coming again. And it may be sooner than we think. I couldn't help but when I read this to think about keeping our eyes on Jesus and how important that is. Fixing them and hurrying along what, we, what he has promised and what we are longing for to see Jesus when he comes again. To see that all of the people that we are associated with or come in contact, even our family members, our loved ones, we want to be saved so that they too might be ready when Jesus comes again. <clears throat> One of the words are, that I picked out of this, uh, you notice he said uh, in that first verse, I have tried to stimulate your thinking, your wholesome thinking. And I've tried to refresh your memory. Oh, how often we need our memories refreshed, don't we? You know, I, I don't know how many times yesterday and the day before and the day before that, that I would go, Carolyn would send me after something, and I'd forget what I was going after before I got there. I try to write a list. And when I walk out of the house to go to the store with the list, I get to the store and where's the list? Laying on the table where I wrote it out. 
I know you haven't done that. I know you haven't forgotten what you were going for. <clears throat> you know, isn't it easy to be a Christian? Isn't it easy to come to church to worship God? Isn't it easy to pray to God just to simply talk to Him every day? Well, I don't think it's easy. And I'm still learning. I'm still trying to grow my Christian life. A lot of people say, I just can't do it. And I guess that's why so many come and join the church. Maybe it's just to simply say, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a member of so-and-so church, and I'm going to heaven. But then we never see him again. How can one grow to be a Christian and not come to church? Not learn how to pray. Not learn how to read the Bible because we really want to devil in to the Word of God. Peter says, I want to stimulate you so that you'll want to dig in to the Word. And we can't do that if we miss Wednesday night Bible study. We can't do that if we're not having our own Bible time every day. And if you're, if you're not praying, if you're not studying the Bible, if you're not praying every day, Maybe we need to start something new in our lives. You know, we must grow. Peter starts this uh, letter out at the beginning. Peter starts these letters out saying that we need to grow in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. That's what he says. We need to grow in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. How do you do this? How do we do this? How do we grow as a Christian? You know, uh, I don't, you probably remember, maybe you've even got a wall in your house marked up. Well, little kids, when they're growing up, they got a yardstick marked on the wall of how much they're growing ever so often. Maybe you've done that when you was a child at home. Kaylee, maybe you and Savannah have one at your house. And every day you go to check to see how much more you've grown. Sometimes we even measure that life of how much we've grown by a brother or a sister, an aunt or an uncle, somebody else in the family. And just to see how much we're progressing. I think it's called a growth chart, isn't it? Something like that. Kids' growth chart. And they even make out charts that you can paste up on the wall. And all you have to do is back up and put a mark. And then you can date it. And ever so often you can check that growth. Well, many of us are probably already growing. If we had a growth chart, we'd probably already be stopped. We'd be leveled off. Maybe some of us even shrinking a little bit. I'm one of the shrinkers, I think. Uh, but maybe as a Christian... In order to grow, we need a Christian growth chart so that we can monitor how much we're growing in Christ. 
Anyway, whatever we do, we must look to Jesus. We must keep our eyes focused upon him. He is the plumb line. He is the thing that we have to pattern our lives after. Well, we have to get to the point of the message this morning, more so. And in Second Peter, the third chapter, uh, in verse 1, it starts out that this is the hope for growing Christians. This is the day that the Lord is coming. We must not miss out on the fact that the Lord is coming. Do you know when? Because if you did, then you could sit down for a while and relax and forget that growth chart because you'd still have time, wouldn't you? How many of you have family members, loved ones maybe, that are lost, that haven't repented and accept the Lord as their, as their Savior? And this is a message that says, God has promised Jesus is coming back, but he sets the time. And be patient, I think the scripture said, be patient because God wants to give you time. God wants to give your loved ones time. God wants to see that no one perishes, but all will have. So those scoffers,